Hi, and welcome to The Curling Show, the podcast that brings you interviews with the sport's top athletes and the people who shape the game. I'm Dean Gemmel, and in this edition, we talked with Paralympic gold medalist Canada's Chris Daw. Well, hi, Chris. Thanks for being on the show. I know you were just at the CCA meetings over the weekend and that you've got a lot to get done this week, so I appreciate your time. And first thing, congratulations on your team's win in Torino. It wasn't totally surprising, but maybe a bit of an upset since I believe your team was ranked fourth going into the event. And the semifinals and finals were close, a miss on the last shot in the final. But what was the difference for your team in the games? Well, I think primarily the, the difference between us and any other team there Whereas we kept the uh, the three basic uh, principles together, uh, teamwork, respect, and patience. That's what got us on the podium. That's what I'll continue with this uh, program success and Team Canada success in the future. Hey, now I know uh, the Canadian uh, the Canadian teams in Torino that were there prior to you had trouble with food poisoning. How did you guys do with that? Well, basically, we learned from example. I guess is the best way to put it. We stayed inside the um, the village, didn't uh, live outside the village like the other Canadian teams did, and then monitored through the doctors and the medical staff everything that was going on with each of us. I'm still not quite sure why they had so many problems, but uh, I guess that's for another another day. Hey, um, the best curlers are usually natural athletes, and you seem to be no different. You won a bronze medal for Canada in the 200 meters. You're finished fourth in the marathon at a Paralympic Games, and you're even part of the Canadian rugby side. Uh, how has sport shaped your life, and how did your experience in other sports help you in, in this past uh, Paralympic Games? Well, sports hasn't really shaped my life. It has been my life. I've been doing this since I was about 12 years old now, uh, which takes me into umpteen number of years. Uh, I'm really the only Canadian athlete to represent Canada at five different Paralympic Games for five different sports. Um, when it comes to the curling size, um, things basically um, the lessons I've learned through all the other sports I've participated in really molded me into being a, a player that was able to remain calm even at the most difficult situations which seemed to be every situation Canada ever played and uh, I think that really assisted the team in having a, a foundation to be able to draw from I may have been the youngest player on the team but I was the most experienced player of uh, the entire team, with the most number of games underneath their belt. So, so give me the full list of, of Paralympic sports you participated in. Well, athletics, marathon, basketball, rugby, and curling now. Wow, and you started curling in 2000. You bet. I had no experience uh, in regards to curling whatsoever. I uh, got a call from <clears throat> a local wheelchair organization that basically said, hey, we've got a new sport on the, on the way, want to give it a try said, what is it? Uh, they said, curling. I said, well, what the heck is curling? Um, they said, well, do you, like, uh, do you like throwing rocks at houses? And I said, sure. They said, do you like drinking beer? I said, okay, you got me hooked. Went out, threw my first rock, uh, true story, at the Guelph Curling Club here in Ontario off the top of a case of Moosehead beer. And who can go wrong when you got those two passions together? <laughs> Hey, what did you? Uh, what what translates from rugby to curling for you? I think just the teamwork side of it. Uh, rugby is a very patient uh, game, very physical. Of course, you don't see many hits out on the curling ice other than with the rocks. But uh, the strategy and the patience that uh, happened in rugby, as well as the physical strength needed to throw the rock up the ice, were the key factors to being able to con convert from one sport to another in this time around. What some people not familiar with rugby may not realize is it's almost as social as curling as well. Well, I mean, it's pretty social. Um, I mean, the great part about wheelchair rugby is the fact that it's the only other full contact sport in the Paralympic Games other than judo. And basically you can describe it as a combination of uh, basketball, Steelers rugby, and demolition derby. So you get to go out there and have a lot of fun and knock a few heads every once in a while. Hey, what did you think of the movie Murderball? I thought it was okay. I've uh, played with everyone that was on the Canadian team there and may, against most of the American guys. I think it was uh, a good testament to the sport, a great uh, start catalyst towards um, not just disabled sport, but the awareness that uh, the limits only exist in your head and are, 
are only there because you put them there yourself. And it uh, really shows the testament of true athleticism. All right, enough about rugby. It's the curling show, so I'm going to get back to curling for a sec here. Let's talk about wheel, wheelchair, uh, wheelchair curling, the sport itself. First, a number of uh, – let me get back here. Let's talk about wheelchair curling and first, the number of participants in Canada and internationally. Well, there's about 36 teams in the world that participate right now. We follow almost the exact same guidelines as uh, able-bodied curling. For those of you that have never seen the game or don't know much about it, there are a couple of very distinct differences of, from wheelchair curling. Wheelchair curling's uh, right now played over six ends, not ten. Uh, you have to play from a chair. I make the ru- I, I follow the rules. I don't make them. Uh, you have to be seated. You don't slide out of the hack like you conventionally would in the able body game. You're about two and a half meters back from the hog line, which simulates a slide out. And the big rule difference is that part of the rock has to be touching the center line at the point of delivery. So you combine all those aspects with the fact that you absolutely, positively can have no sweeping, and you got the best weight and line deliverers that play the game today. Now you say you follow the rules, but you don't make them in respect to having to be in a chair. Is that because you'd rather throw from the case of Moosehead? Or? <laughs> well, you never know. I, I mean, the sport is still uh, really in its infancy. Um, it's a great sport. It's the only sport uh, truly in the world where it doesn't matter whether you have a disability or not. It's just a sport. Um, my dream is to be the first um, player that plays from a chair that would be able to go to both the Olympics and the Paralympic Games and medal in both. Hey, you know, I don't mean any disrespect here, but because there isn't sweeping in the, in your sport, has there been any talk of doubles curling? Making, I mean, I know you're following the rules of curling in, in so many ways, but do, do two-man teams make as much sense as four-man teams or even singles? Well, I think the, the idea behind this is to keep wheelchair curling as true to the able-bodied sport as we can. And thus, we need to have four. I think we could probably expand it to doubles or singles. But really, the sport is about being curling. Uh, as wheelchair curling comes out of its infancy, I think you're going to see the implementation of some sweeping. It happens now. Uh, I sweep myself. Um, we have about six to ten feet of sweeping path. And when you can effectively sweep, uh, in the house, it makes a difference to our game. Sure. We're going to change some rules around as we come out of the infancy and then to the next stage, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be good. Hey, the mail just get arrived? No, just a friend showing up at the door. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the mailman. No, no, no. All right, well, I might... Uh... I might, I might let the uh, let the dog settle just for a minute, and then all I got. That, that, those are great points, and and things that you know that people who aren't in the game may not consider. Um, hey, we know that. Uh, let's talk about something else. We know that many curling clubs operate on razor thin margins with old buildings. They're not always wheelchair accessible. Is there any effort underway to help fund uh, making curling clubs more wheelchair accessible? Well, I think there's major uh, advancements in in that, in particularly Ontario throughout the world. But the big thing that I need to emphasize here for all of those considering wheelchair programs is this. There's a true difference between making a building accessible and making it functionally accessible. You don't have to spend $80,000 to make your building accessible. You can spend about 1000 bucks and it'll work just as well as that $80,000 project. We're used to being uh, having to modify or accommodate to... Uh, not so accessible areas, and it's about getting the game out there and getting the exposure. And if anybody's interested, just give me a call. I'll tell you how to do it. It's real easy. Well, that's great news, I think, and I think it's it, it's probably encouraging for some people who are involved in volunteer curling clubs and concerned about it. Uh, and the fact is, I, I guess, to hear from you that it's not that big a project, that it can be done easily is good. You, you can pick up a set of portable ramps right now that will cover about 15 to 20 feet. For less than 400 bucks, and then mo- moving stuff around in a bathroom really isn't about making major uh, changes. It's about knowing how to do the right changes. Sure. Hey, what's next for Chris Daw in the sport? Well, in the sport, I think, uh, number one, we're, we're going to definitely make the, uh, the final changeover from wheelchair curling into able body. I'm working on putting together a team. Um, 
within the next year where it'll be one wheelchair curler and three able body curlers. Uh, start challenging maybe the WCF rules or the CCA rules in regards to stick curling, which I don't think is going to be that big of a deal. It just has to be shown that it's, uh, it's necessary. And then, of course, we're looking forward to 2010 with both uh, able body and wheelchair curling programs. All right, Chris, hey, I appreciate your time. We end these interviews with something we call the run back, where I give you a topic and you give me your thoughts in one to three words or less, and I'm pretty lax, so if you go a little longer, that's not the end of the world. All right. Your favorite sport other than curling? Uh, rugby. Why tattoos seem to be so popular with wheelchair curlers? <laughs> um, independence. It, it shows, uh, shows we're different. A favorite athlete when you were growing up? Wow, that's a tough one. Um, Greg Luganis. Greg Luganis, the all-star curling team you'd like to skip. Wow. Um, three guy, three people from anywhere. Uh, Nedowin, um, Kelly Scott, uh, John Epping, and uh, Carter Rycroft. Oh, okay, so you've got an alternate there, too. You bet. Because <laughs> you're on the team. So. <laughs> you bet. Uh, you know what? I already asked you what a former rugby player thinks about the documentary Murder Ball, so we already covered that, didn't we? Anything else you want to add on that? No, I just think uh, the biggest thing that people can do is embrace the sport not as being different but being inclusionary. Get out there and anybody you know, uh, remember, this sport is about passion. Get out there, play for the game, not, uh, not for any other reason. Just get out there and play. Hey, that's great to hear, Chris, and thanks for being on the show. Congratulations on all your success, and we look forward to seeing your future plans and work with the game unfold. No problem. Thanks very much, Dean. That's Chris Daw on The Curling Show. Thanks for listening. the crowd